Hi, and uh, welcome to the Valentine's Cook Along. So, um, we didn't expect to be here this time uh, last year, but we still are, and we thank you uh, for your continued support, and I hope you have uh, the best Valentine's you possibly can. I'm going to quickly talk you through the box, what's in your box and what to do with it, and then we'll show a more in-depth video. And the reason we've done it on YouTube rather than the Instagram Live format is that I thought as a four course it could be a little bit stressful having to keep up, so this way you can rewind, pause, go back however you wish. But I'll quickly talk you through the box. So inside of a new box, each dish has been separated into bags. You have your desserts that are all set in the black box, oysters and sauce, everything you need for your beef tartare and everything for the pork dish. The pork is the most intense in terms of cooking, so you're going to want to watch the video for that. The beef tartare is super simple um, and the oysters even more so. And the dessert is pretty much finished and the reason we've done it this way is so that you weren't constantly getting up, cooking, getting back down. It's going to take you four hours to have your, your dinner. We thought it should be more enjoyable. Also in the box is your edible markers and your two canvas. Uh, some of you who uh, kind of requested that I wrote the message on for Simon on the Streets um, will already have this marked on, so maybe you don't want to add any more to it. Uh, but you can literally draw whatever you like on this. Um, and at whatever time you like, there's no shelf life on these. Um, so just quickly on the first dish, the oysters, keep them in your fridge, keep everything in your fridge. Um, this is super easy, just shuck the oysters if you know how. If you don't know how, uh, there's a little video of John doing it for you. And then a quick clean and sauce on top, straightforward. The beef tartare, just chop your beef up, you can do this in advance if you want. I wouldn't do it too far in advance, but if you want to do it a couple of hours in advance, it's absolutely fine. The key is to get your beef at kind of room temperature, so you don't want to be serving this fridge cold, and then everything else is just straight out of the packet. When it comes to the pork, the one thing that you want to do in advance is the sushi rice. Um, so we'll show you how to do that, but it's just a quick clean uh, by cold water, running over it, and drain it off three to five times, just until you've got a nice clear water, and then we'll sit and let it bloom. So on to the videos, thank you so much. Okay, so the reason we're gonna start with the dessert is that with your chocolate dessert, the key to this is getting the temperature right. You don't have to do anything. Anton or Pastry Chef's done everything for you, but it is essential that you bring that out of the fridge nice and early. And just get that plated up so it can just sit, come to that kind of warm, malleable texture. So I'll leave you with John for this one. Well, everything's kind of ready to go. We're gonna basically just assemble the dessert. First thing you're gonna take out is the crowding filling and then underneath that you've got a little package of two chocolate hearts. So take your time when you're actually unpacking this. Ferris is ideal. What you'll find when you take the top layer off is two pieces of two pieces of love. Two say. pieces burn. So just lift those away. What we've got here is our chocolate ganache, uh, black olive on top and we're gonna fill it inside I just want to snip the piping bag, split the two, and then just make sure all the filling is just down at the bottom of the piping bag, and just fill it. And then that should that should be rock solid, so you can you can be pretty rough with this thing, and just bang her on. Like I said, the key is just temperature. Just really let that come to room temperature. You've got to bring it out the fridge early. I would say an hour. Little uh, spermy wormies. I like to just put those guys there, just dripping down. Uh, but you can keep them in the fridge until you're good to go and get on with the rest of your meal. Yeah. So that's it. Our chocolate hard dessert, straight off the menu. Okay, so next up, make a preparation on the sushi rice. So you've got the exact amount of rice you need for today and a little piece of kombu. What we need to do first is remove that kombu. Just try to see, we just set that to one side. And then your rice, just gently pour into a small bowl. You've got your rice, the key here is you just want to get it. So you can, some cold running water. And ideally, don't let it smash the grains too much. So just nice and gentle. There we go. Take it away and just give it a quick run through. You'll see how cloudy that becomes. 
At that point, discard that water and do it again. Again, avoiding contact with the rice grains and just being as gentle as you can, and washing all that off. Still super cloudy. After you've washed it five times, for the last time, we're just gonna cover that completely. Um, it doesn't really matter how much, but we're just gonna cover it in some more water and we're just gonna let that rice bloom. You just leave that, set that to one side, and then just set a timer for about 15 minutes. There we go. And we're just gonna let that sit and kind of soak. Okay, so on with the oysters. With the oysters, we think it's perfect for Valentine's Day and it's super easy. Uh, there's a little bit of a fear of shucking them, so John here is gonna show you how to shuck them. Um, so you've got six oysters in there, there's three each. If you don't have an oyster knife, don't worry about it. You can just use a firm knife. Make sure it's nice and strong. Um, if it's a cooked knife, a blunder one would be ideal. The most important thing for me is get a cloth and then it's not gonna go through your fingers. Uh, so with the oysters, um, as we already said, really important that we've got a cloth. So we're gonna take the oyster with the round end facing into the cloth and completely rip it. With a knife, you're gonna go into this part here. So basically, the hinge of the oyster, you're gonna go straight in and go deep enough that what you wanna do is twist the knife and the actual top of the oyster pop off. So as long as you're in far, far down enough, and you twist, pop the lid of the oyster on. At that stage, you can run the, uh, the knife just across that flat edge of the shell, and you just wanna coax that top edge of the shell away. Uh, at this stage, it's not essential. Uh, but I quite like to wash them. I just find that any grit that you've got from kind of chipping away at that in the mouth is not a great mouthfeel. Um, so if you've got sparkling water, it's really, really great for cleaning shellfish quickly, for cleaning scallops, when you're shucking them, for cleaning oysters. All I do is just have a spoon at hand. I just scoop it straight in for a second. Don't let it stay in for too long, because you want it to absorb all that water. It's just going to taste of nothing. You'll lose the taste. Just in, and then straight back out, back into your shell. And you're just confident you've got a nice clean oyster. Okay, so when it comes to serving them, if you've got ice to serve them over crushed ice, that's great. Um, if you've just got ice cubes, take one of the bags, your food came in, stick the ice in and just gently, back of a rolling pin, that'll give you some crushed ice, can do any bowl you want, just to keep them nice and, uh, and chill. Next up, oysters under the ice. Uh, strawberry kimchi, you have plenty, you don't need to use it all. Uh, this is just your basic kind of spicy kimchi three stressed strawberries through it, and a little bit of mirin, and then puree. So you can snip the end of the packet, and then just sauce all over. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, we want to cook your sushi rice. Don't worry about cooking it before you've cooked your meat, it'll sit quite nicely. Um, so it's now been blooming for around 15 minutes. It can go up to 30, it's not a big deal. And then just drain as best you can the water away from it. If you want to use a colander, you, you're more than welcome to. It won't make a great deal of difference, but I just feel that it's a little bit abrasive and you don't really want to damage those grounds. So there you are. You've got your drained rice. You'll need your rice seasoning and your condo. And we're bringing out of retirement. Ryan, everyone. Behind the lens. <laughs> so here we have the rice. And then we have 110 grams of water into the pan and just give it a little shake to catch all the remaining grains. Then combo leaf at the top and just level it out. Lid on and on a fairly medium heat, not too high, and set that timer for eight minutes. And you want it at the kind of the temperature you cook your vegetables, right? Like yes. if you're cooking not potatoes, not you don't want them boiling away, away, but you just want, you want right. it to reach 100, right? Yes. There we go, an eight minutes eight on the timer for that. As a little hack, because we're going to want to season this with warm dressing, that's right. just stick that on top of that, that'll be fine. All right, cool, cool. skip into the beef. So next we're going to do the tartare. One of your bags in the box will have everything for this dish, so we've got the actual beef itself, we've got some nice fillet, good olive juice, some beef fat, and some ovulato, which is uh, some dry potato starch and then we have some olive powders. We've also got some salt here, you need a small pan. Uh, the beef itself, we've got a little bit of trim and um, there's not much to come off this. So just take the obvious bits of sinew or fat on the outside away. As I say we've got fillet here so there's not a lot to really 
take away. Basically, where you can see the meat, meat is in you, you just want to favour the meat side and make sure none of that ends up in your tartar so you've got a nice finished texture. Two pieces, we're taking any bits of sinew from the outside away and we're just going to start to form a nice tartar. So basically for the sides on this one, get a nice straight edge, keeping these pieces still, still nice and thin. So you don't want to take big chunks off, but if you just give it a little bit of shape before you start doing your, uh, your tartar, it's a little bit easier for consistency when it comes to the sides. I've got this main piece I'm going to work on now, it's got some straight edges. It's got a nice straight edge so I know I can keep it sturdy on the board like that and then just straight down. You're just looking for a few nice pieces start doing your tartar from. That's the kind of the thickness we're looking for, a few millimetre. So our first piece that we broke down, we've got into all equal thickness and now we can start actually doing the tartar. So basically just make sure it's nice and even on the board. Put the knife down, because once you've made that first slice, you don't want to kind of go through this like kind of fast and uh, as if you were like chopping chopping something, typically you chop like an onion fine and you can just go turbo on it, there's no need for that, you can just keep it nice and steady. If you want to be super consistent, you can just take that little bit away at the beginning and then you know you've got a completely set size on your tartar all the way through. Just losing those tiny bits from the end, straight up the waist, but that's the kind of consistency you want throughout the whole tartar. So you just take your next piece, just move to the board, and then I said, pinch that first one, straight down, and then you can just adopt some more regular chopping position on your knife. You can speed up a little bit if you want and just kind of use the heel of the knife a little bit more but there's no rush, just take your time, make sure the size is nice and consistent. Okay, so if you have the uh, tomato instead of the beef for the tartar, you can treat the tomato in the same way. You just want to uh, prepare it in the same way with a knife and then you have olive oil instead of the beef fat dressing over at the end. And then for the rest of the dish, you just build it the same. It's now going up on our rice, pro first sitting. A little rhyme on this, that's how I get it so Now you just want to set this down to five more minutes and then just turn that heat down by about half. Key in this rhyme, we keep the lid on all times, right? Do not lift that lid. Do not lift that lid. At all. Do it. At lift all. that lid. Yeah. Don't lift the lid. Keep all the moisture in. Yeah. We will tell you when to lift that lid. <laughs> <laughs> so when you come to prepare this, um, you can do this a little bit in advance. Uh, so if you want to have your beef tartar ready, Cover it in a little bit of cling film or a little bit of baking paper, a parchment paper, sorry, and just leave it out at room temperature. Again, the key with this, you don't want it too cold. We are going to season it with the beef fat, uh, but we're going to do that last minute as we serve. So the beef fat will be hot anywhere, but I like it at a more room temperature than like chilled. Uh, so now we've got all the beef at Bernard's Tartar. We're just going to get a bowl, we've got salt ready to season, we're going to transfer all this to the bowl and then season this up. So, um, as always, with the salt, really grind it down, want it nice and fine and just you want to evenly season that. If you are going to do this in advance, uh, don't season it until the last minute. It's a bit nicer. Absolutely. So if you have a microwave, which we do not, you can just warm that fat up a little bit in the microwave until it gets to a pan. And I'm just going to warm it a little ricey there for a second. So time is now up on the rice. Just pull that off the stove completely. Take another rice job here. I just leave it set. Timer again for another 15 minutes and then you're good. Have your fat warm so you can easily get it out and then squeeze that into a small little beef fat there. Let's get that hot. So I like to get that not smoking but just just about smoking. Um, so get it really hot and then just push it to one side while you play it on your tartar. Cool. Take the, the beef, obviously you can check the seasoning and um, the other things are adding to it aren't particularly salty so make sure this is nicely seasoned up how you want to eat it. Just add the tartar to the plate. <laughs> Just add it to the plate, but just make sure you're not um, making it too compact and leaving space for us to build the dish with the other. Yeah, plenty of nice other yeah. ingredients. Almost like camouflage this one, right? Yeah, man. So you've got your olive juice. Go ahead and transfer the olive juice to the, uh, to the tartar. You can actually use the bag, a little bowl or the spoon just to dress this. As with any sauces with the bag, the fats, things like that, you don't need to use all of it, just whatever you're comfortable using. Just nice and gradual so it's even. Okay, so um, we've got the beef dressed with the olive juice. You've got two powders in your bag. Just open those up, and then you can just start dressing straight over the uh, over the tartar like so, even the over the top. So you've got another bag that looks completely clear. This has got ovulato inside, so it's uh, potato starch. You want to just make sure you've got dry hands when you take this out of the bag, and the little sheets like this, and we're going to break them up over the top. 
and just get a bit of height on that, scrunch it a little bit. So you can let this kind of crease. Right then, finishing, beef fat, nice and hot, not quite smoking. And you're just gonna pour that warm fat straight over the top to dress the beef. If you wanna keep a little bit back, it'd be a really nice thing to, uh, to hook your pork with. All right, so there you have it. Fill it with beef tartare, go to a juice, I'll be allowed to potato starch and dried olive power. Okay, so for the fun bit, for those of you who'd like to write down um, a little Valentine's note, you've got your edible pens here, and um, you can just find a loved one, or a head chef, or someone that you've that you've been wanting to say something to for a while. And <laughs> 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 yeah, spend some time and, and do whatever you want, get creative with it, you can write whatever you want. We're going to cover it in food anyway, but we thought it would be quite fun. Compare our, our poetic notes. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like the best? He just says, I'm gonna wreck you so hard. <laughs> but I mean, come on, stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, the heart's nice. I said, do you know what? You know when someone, you think someone knows you, but then it's only when you realise the belly button protruding on the vest and you think, Hernia. You really know me. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so when we get to your main course of the pork, you should have your sushi rice. It's warm, warmish, room tempe. It can be hot if you've got it hot. Pork cheeks, keep these in the bag and just add some water to that and bring it to a nice gentle simmer. Mm. The leek puree just needs emptying out of the sachet. It doesn't need to be warmed. Iberico pork. Just get out of the bag and the frying pan at the ready. So the first thing we'll do is prepare the choy. So guys, for the choy, uh, we're just going to start by taking the ends off and then we're just going to blanch the stuff. Uh, yeah, so we've got this water up to a boil. And just straight in with the choy mix. Okay, so we've simmered these really briefly and then we're just going to refresh them in an ice bath. So once they've refreshed, just for about 20 seconds, we're just going to drain them. Slag the steam tails, let's give them a good chop. They're already super pasteurised, so you don't need to worry about these guys. And then just a nice, kind of chunky, rough chop through that. Into a mixing bowl, add your breadcrumbs and a little bit of salt and just a tiny amount of the dressing. Mix that together so the dressing starts to soak into the bread. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of those crumbs. A bit more salt to counteract it. And some more of the dressing. Okay, so onto our rolls. Take the biggest leaves you can find. Off. And then stuff the leaves. So once you've got your langoustine mix in, spread that out nice and even. And then just roll your sides over. Like that. Tuck them back in underneath and then take your tube, cut through. A nice shot. And after these guys, to cut your plate. Okay, so once your pork cheek has been simmering for say five, 
10 minutes. The heat's already in it, these are already cooked through. Just keep the bag, discard the water, and just cut the whole thing into the pot. Put that back on the heat, just to glaze those up. If you have the pescatarian box, super easy. Um, just paste the cod into the oven, uh, 180, and just uh, just bake it straight away, about eight to 10 minutes until you feel a nice firmness through it. The cod is cured, um, so it'll take a little bit less cooking than a regular piece of fish, and your smoked eel will take maybe three to four minutes. So now the pork cheeks are nicely glazed, Put them to one side, keep the heat in it. If you have Iberico pork, nice non-stick frying pan, and get that hot to touch. Beef fat that I had left over from, uh, from the beef tartare, take a little bit of that in the pan. Once you've got a nice smoke to the pan, make sure your fat's covered evenly, and cook. Keep it on one side. Once it's not sticked, just allow that to colour. I'm just keeping it cooking on one side. The beauty with the meat, as you can see, as it starts to cook, and you can really monitor the cooking temperature on this one. I'm gonna leave it one side down so I can get some nice char marks. And at this stage, just add a little bit of salt. And then mine dry like So now I can see some nice coloration on the pork. I'm gonna turn that over. Giving it a nice base with some of that delicious beef fat. And then again, just season the other side. down and once you've got a nice bounce back just take that off the heat and allow that to rest for a couple of minutes. Right okay so now we're at a stage where we have our secretos, our char siu pork that's cooked and just resting. We'll plate up the rest. Your pork cheeks make sure they're nice and warm and beautiful glaze to them. If that sauce starts to thicken too much just add a little bit of water to it. Pig's cheeks are ready. You have your black lake emulsion and I'm going to use up, you don't have to, but a little bit of my strawberry kimchi also that I have left over from the oysters. Sushi rice. So you can work with a spoon, you can work with your fingers. I like to work with just slightly wet hands. So that's some vinegar if you need. Oh, yeah. Wet your hands first. Add your warm rice to your plate. Just roughly where you're going to leave your meats. And then just a little spoon for your black leek. And this can go wherever you want. You know, I like to be messy with it. You can do whatever you see fit. Some of that nice red strawberry kimchi. And then for your char so I'm just gonna cut off the thin bits. And portion them into just little nice kind of edible pieces. And on your bit bits. Maybe nice. That's how you want it nice and pink through the center there. Pig cheek can go on. With a little bit of the sauce. The credos can go on. And there you have it. Chelsea pork, soy, honey marinated uh, pig's cheek, sushi rice, little cold langoustine hand rolls, some kimchi sauce, and uh, some black leek. Happy days, enjoy.